Yes, it was unbelievable, that's for sure. The storm with the win over the Warriors, 30 points to 26 in the end. Two tries within that last three minutes to win the game. How would you describe, not, not just um, Xavier Coates' try, but just that finish overall in this game? Well, it's very much typical of the modern day game. I mean, you're just not safe anymore. It used to be a time back in my day, if you led by 10 points with 10 minutes to go, you were home. You know, but these days, it's nothing for teams to rattle up points late in the game. We've seen some amazing finishes. That's the one most comes to mind because it's the recent one. But we've seen a lot of this. Even with a couple of minutes to go, if you can get two kickoffs in, you're a chance of scoring three tries in five minutes. That's, that's, it's, not, it's not hard to score that amount of tries with the way the game is played these days. The athletes, the ball movement, um, it can happen to you. So you just can't go to rest when you're defence. The amazing part of this was actually the Warriors in that last set of six, well, prior to that, did a great job with their defence. They actually kept them to nearly the other side of the field. Jonah Pezzett got the ball and had to run back behind the 40 on the last tackle to have a shot at field goal. But silly Mitch Barnett somehow got his back in the road. Like, there's no way in the world he was going to kick the field goal. Yeah. But Mitch Barnett somehow got himself in the road. They got so another set of six. Mm. And then that's how they scored on the back end of that. Actually, their set of six in defence was fantastic. They should have won the game, like, but... The thing, the thing that stuck out for me, I actually tipped the Warriors. I thought they'd win that game. And, you know, looked like being right with only a couple of minutes to go. But they were terrible in the first half. Mm. They just didn't turn up ready and what I thought they would do. And they got themselves well behind. They were down 18-6. For the next 35 minutes, the Warriors showed, to me and to everyone, why they can win this competition, why they're a force in this competition. They're a big, powerful, skillful side. What they did in the first 35 minutes of the second half to Melbourne Storm, no one does to Melbourne in Melbourne, ever. And it was brilliant. Are you surprised there Roger didn't run down Nick Mooney? Nick He's quick. Well. Nick, Nick Mooney's very quick. He scored two tries from that play, outside, inside. Yeah. No club does their set plays better than Melbourne. Geez, that pass. Sean Johnson, when he goes to the line, and he's got two players leading outside of him and he plays out the back off have, his inside leg. Have you ever seen anyone make it look so good? Oh, he's, it's George freakish. Johnson makes it look so good. Well, he makes it look easy. The, it's so silly. That try in the first half where he goes to the line, he can play off the inside leg and throw a 15-metre bullet and hit the mark. Skill. I like the fullback, Torfiki. He's only little and, geez, he's brave. The Warriors fullback. Do, do you think the Storm can win it this year? Yeah. Well, they've, they've been missing their best two players. Yeah, considering no Munster and no, no Nelson. Munster. I think they can win it. For sure, yeah. Without Munster for the entirety of it? No. He'll be back. He'll be back. Yeah. yeah. I need him back, especially in the big games, because you just throw in the ball and go, here, do something. Mm. Well, you have a look at their team. You've got the fullback can be brilliant, the hooker's brilliant, then you have Munster, Nelson. And we haven't seen the, the young... Fire, um, is it Fire Longo? Yeah. The, the, the younger... But he's a f fullback. Yeah, he's a fullback. I, I don't know where he comes into the team. He'll but start at four. I think the key yes. to them is uh, Warbrick. The try he scored was awesome. He went over the top of Marcelo to you know, getting those victories constantly. You saw him do it in the semi-final last year against the Roosters. Just come up with the match-winning. You know, he's now doing that consistent. Rumor Smith mm. playing better than he was last year. Like once you get these players getting better, and if they can go to another level, they, they become very hard to beat. Because you've got the star quality that should handle the big games. Can you see Melbourne winning it, Gus? Yeah, I don't know about winning it. Um, I haven't got them in my top four, uh, even though they've got off to a good start to the season. I think there's better teams around. Um, yeah, but they're well coached. They're very professional. They don't beat themselves, you know, and they can pull games out of the fire like that. I mean, they're obviously a force. And as you say, Munster and Nelson are so for Solomon to come back. They're, they're always hard to beat. Mm. There's no denying it was, it was a great effort from the Warriors. They haven't had the best start to the year, though. Mm. The, looking at that team, though, they, they were so close to, to winning last night. Where do you see them? Obviously, last year they had such an incredible run towards the back end uh, it, with the home final as well. Where do you see them? Well, you've got to win your close games. Mm. An old coach of mine said you, you, you win eight, you lose eight, and the other eight games, the tight ones, if you win most of them, that decides your season. So you've got to win the close yeah. games. Last week they got beat by four points, was it? By well, they were in Jeff. front. Yeah. They should have won that one, really, of how much possession. And then last night, so 
got to win the close games. What about Roger to have Arthur Sheikh, seeing him in action last he night? He was good. I'll tell you what else was good was the other centre, uh, Rocco, Rocco Berry. Berry yeah. What a good player he is. Mm. He's only young Rocco Berry. Um, he's out of, I think, rugby union, I believe. His dad was an all black. His father was an all black. Wow, he, he was... But to, the two centres, I've got to say, I don't think I've seen a team that are able to give their centres so much good ball. Uh, they were so involved. Like most centres these days would barely touch the ball in a half-decent position with more than a metre or two to run. But these blokes had heaps of ball. He looked really strong too. Um, would you play him, Roger? Would you play him centre or fullback? You know what? If he's getting this much ball, play him centre. Mm. Like in other teams, you're wasting your money. But and like I said, the fullback does a good job. So who, who's the other centre? If he goes back to centre, you're not going to put the the small kid there at centre, are you? So is there another centre that they've got sitting in the? Well, or then the they've got, they got a lot of them over there. Yeah, they've they got a lot of them. Nickel Klukstar, he's back next. Yeah, but he's a round five eight. No, he's full, he's full fullback. Back. Uh, chance. Oh, yeah, of course, I'm thinking of um, Harris. Tavita. Harris Tavita, Chanel. he's a 5'8", yeah. yeah. But no, I think, I, at the moment, um, I think he's doing a pretty good job, the, the young fellow at the back, but no one gets as much ball in the centres and somehow they just get the ball to him. Must be uh, the way Johnson plays, he holds everyone up so much. Yeah, it was certainly a great and entertaining game. Uh, also yesterday, uh, we did see heartbreak for the Newcastle Knights, but a thrilling Tackle. win Touch. for the Cowboys. A Chad Townsend field goal, uh, handing North Queensland a golden point victory over Newcastle. Joey, the one. complaints from the neighbours while you were watching oh, this yeah. one? Hard yards. I was at my mate's place, so I was screaming as loud as I could. They had the game won. Once again, you've got to win the tight games. If you don't win the tight games, then you're not going to be there at the end of the year. They had this game once. I was impressed with Deed. Oh, he, He's tough. He looks like a nightmare. He bases his game him. around the running game. Um, yeah. As soon as he scored that, I went, nah, they're gone. And then Ch Chad Townsend got him home. There's some good signs for Newcastle, but just lack of attention to detail and concentration. Can't make stupid errors. There was a lot of errors in this game. Must have been really slippery. Mm. I know it was hot. It was 28 degrees and a lot of humidity. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'd be disappointed losing that one. Gus, how did you see this one? It was a game I didn't think Newcastle were ever going to lose. It did, it's two reasons. Newcastle were playing really well and the Cowboys weren't. The Cowboys never looked like getting it out of themselves. But I think the 10 minutes after half-time where Cowboys got two quick tries, got them back into the contest, then it looked like Newcastle had steadied. And then we just got this... How, this must be infectious in football teams because once one bloke drops the ball, yeah. there seems to be a, several of them all do it. I don't know whether it gets the pressure or... You know, I don't know what it is, but... Um, Newcastle, nice Newcastle just imploded <laughs> and <laughs> the Cowboys were good enough to, to get them there. Just those 50-50 balls. you got to get them. Well, that ball on the ground with Tyson Gamble, he had to get that ball. They well, even then, so they are working in position for a field goal and get the ball stripped off them. Once again, concentration. Kalen dropping that ball when they'd kicked downfield. It's just that concentration, attention to detail. What did this tell you about Newcastle? Oh, you imagine being the coach, you would have just thrown yourself yeah. out of the box. It would have been awful to watch. Well, you can't lose games like that. Yeah. You know, not in this competition. You've got to win them ones, particularly where you hold a, you know, a good lead twice in a game. Do you think uh, the expectation of Newcastle's weighing them down? After last year, if I'm, well, people were talking top four this year. Do you think that's affecting them? Uh, no, well, they did so much good work to, to, to get themselves in a great position in this game. Well, they're a good team, the Cowboys. And obviously they weren't playing good, but you've got to... You know, you... You playing well puts them in that position. When you go up there and they're forwards, the Safudi boys, Thompson, mm. um, they were doing a great job early. They were very aggressive. And so, you know, you got to... That pressure that they apply, most surely, uh, you know, says a bit about how the Cowboys are playing, but they just capitulated. For the Cowboys... Oh, my God. Like their key in attack is Scott Drinkwater. Mm. And Scott's made some noises during the week he wants to play Origin. And attack-wise, he's up to that level. But the first, he's, tackle, he's tackling, he, he needs to put his body on. The first try there, I don't know if we can get it up from Adam Elliott. He was in the front line. Uh, if you look at the great fullbacks, they save tries. Mm. And that's what Scott's got to do. He's got to work on stopping tries because at the moment he's just not. Tom Dearden was so brave. Um, Isn't he tough? Nana, like the way he just, you know, the way they found a try when they had to was pretty impressive. They had a couple of tries taken off them. Val Holmes scored a try, which was taken off them. Um, he then had another try where he pulled up, was pulled up and murdered. This is That's for the when the game's goal. won, yeah. 
Very tough. Do you think he like without half him, didn't. Yeah, he is a halfback. That's what he is. He, he, yeah, you can steer him around. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You Good. think so? Yeah. He seems to do the other part so well. Well, he just that's because like, just... he's got the ability to do it, and he has to do it because Chad Townsend's there. It's like Jerome Luai. Jerome Luai's a halfback, but he only plays that five-eight role because he plays with Nathan Cleary. You know, sometimes Did he go up a as a halfback? Did he play halfback he, when he first went yeah. up? So I had that bad year when... He played at Brisbane. He played halfback. Yeah. Played but Brisbane. he was a teenager. He was 18 or yeah. something. Yeah. He was a baby. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and tiny. That'd be... And they were going and poor And your turn was time. going hopeless. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're back to the drawing board for the Newcastle Knights, but uh, the Cowboys, they get the two points on that occasion. Coming up. He's been impressive. Well, a young half, he's playing outside a real dominant halfback at the moment. Jamal Fogarty is absolutely killing it. But a young half coming in to grade. If you can base your game around your running game, competing hard and defending strong, it's a great base. His running game, he was dynamic off that left foot. He's tough. He's not as afraid of the, the contact. Geez, they're a well-balanced team, Canberra. They've got power game. Jordan Rapiner at fullback, he starts it. And uh, yeah, Jamal Fogarty, he's kicking game. Geez, they don't boot himself. They are a tough, tough team. I was watching him last week because he never got the ball at all last week. Ethan Strange. Yeah, yeah. Fogarty just kept it on the right-hand side and kept it between him and Papali and through the middle. It was, it was very clever how they did it. And But what I was watching him was he was telling everyone still what to do. So the other thing, and Gus was talking about the confidence with uh, Reese Walsh, you need to be able to have the ability, especially if you're young to come in, you need to be able to tell older blokes where to go and what to do, especially if you know what's happening and listening to the calls. and. So one thing he had, he had he had that confidence to own his left side. So that that tells you that he's there to play. He's he knows what he's doing. He's ready to go, and he's got the confidence to pass on what he's thinking. Did you take out some positive signs from from the Tigers? Um, yeah, look, they're a work in progress. This is a side that's got to be rebuilt from the ground up. They've started that in their pathways. Some of these fellas have got to NRL level probably before their time and they're not playing with a really strong side, so it's, a, it's hard work at the moment. Um, puts a lot of pressure on the senior players that are in the team, but uh, as long as they're out there competing every week, they're going to get better. It's going to take a few years. It's not going to happen overnight. And you need two or three waves of development to come through to join these fellas as well. Um, but they'll get better the longer they play. Time spent playing together and time spent playing in the NRL are the two greatest things that you can have. And they just don't have that as a group at the moment. So you've just got to be patient with them. It's as simple as that. And it's not easy, and I know it firsthand, it's not easy to get out of the cellar in this competition anymore. You know, it's just not. You can't buy your way out. You've got to but develop... It's only the opposite, because you pay more for everyone, yeah. don't you? Well, you, everyone you buy, you pay a premium for. It's the opposite. It, so it's... Unless it, you have some luck with some kids coming through. Yeah. You have no chance of really getting out. It's yeah. no and everyone's got their foot on your head. And, 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 there's, and there's luck in that. There's luck in the recruitment at younger levels because mm. you're going to try a lot of kids and there's a very small percentage get through. It's not easy to make it in the NRL. It's mm. just not. The percentages are so you low. stick so, with the young halves? Eh? Stick with the young halves? You've got to. Yeah. You got to. He, he, he's going to be a really... He's going to be an NRL player. Five. Lachlan Galvin. Lachlan Galvin. Like we've seen him coming for, for years. It's probably before his time to be there, but he's one of them blokes who's got the confidence and he's got... The, no, I, I reckon of all the young halves that I've seen come through and make it, when they were young, they could sit down and intelligently talk to you about football and highlight all the different idiosyncrasies of all the top halfbacks of the time. Like when you were coming through, you could tell me about every halfback that played in the 80s and 90s because they're actually students of the game. They studied the game and studied people. You took little bits off that player or that player or that player. You work out what your strengths are. These good halfbacks that are going to make it through can all do that. They can all talk intelligently about the game and they all are students of the game. Unless you do that, you're not going to make it. It's as simple as that. Well, we saw Aiden Caesar come on. So what do you think the best makeup is for the Tigers' halves I going just think forward? put the young ones in, have Caesar so on Sullivan, the bench there. Help, Sullivan help and yeah. They just, get, they just leave them there, let them develop and time on the field, time on the training paddock. There'll be some games where you've got to protect them from it. There are some games where you probably yeah, don't expose them. You don't, you know, and that's what, that's what the Aiden Caesars are there for. They're there to go and play the nose games mm. so that you can, you can hold the young kids back. The last thing you want to do is rush them. You don't want to hold them back, but you don't want to rush them either. And you don't want to put them in situations that are going to be counterproductive to their own confidence or open the way up to scrutiny. You know, and you've got older players there to go and take the beating for that. That's what they're there for. Mm. The good part about going down to Canberra was I would have learned some lessons. Like Canberra are so measly giving you the ball. 
you know, of course Fogarty just controls it so well. They're giving you no ball. And and the only time they actually got ball, they had ball for a five-minute period and they scored two tries. Two tries, yeah. Uh, they're a really nice play on the... Well, they went inside, inside, and then uh, Appy got them through the middle. And that was the only period. That was the only period they actually had the ball, I reckon, for, you know, more than five minutes consecutively in, a, in, a, in the time of game. Did Canberra's a hard team to play when they're playing the way they are. They're, oh, they're so powerful. strong. And the moment they got the ball back, Canberra, they said that was it. You never saw the Tigers again because they just went back to controlling it, kicking it, and they're just too too strong. So that was a hard game for them, but they would have learnt so much out of how important possession is. Mm. Well, plenty, uh, plenty for the Tigers to look at in the coming weeks. Yes, Battle of the West on a Friday night at Penrith and the Panthers. They would have been happy with this one. The Eels, they've been the team that has troubled Penrith over recent times, but uh, the Penrith Panthers finally got the win over Parramatta. What did you make of this uh, Panthers performance on Friday night, Freddie? Well, I thought they looked in control pretty much the whole game. Um, Parramatta scored a couple of tries. Um, they got down there, a few opportunities has come up with with great moments, but I thought Penrith controlled the game pretty much entirely. It wasn't coming easy, but they just found a way, scored some really good tries at the end of the game. The try where Yo kicked the ball and then the Moses Leota try was just incredible show of athleticism, but all in all it was uh, a little bit of pressure, you know, considering they got beat last week down in Melbourne and you know everyone wants to put pressure on Penrith because they're three-time premiers, but I thought they answered some the other night. I thought they were great. Where do you see them getting to this season? Obviously, the last few years have just been uh, unbelievable. Are you seeing some different performances from them this year? Well, they're a different team, without a doubt. But James Fisher-Harris, they're waiting on scans. That's going to play a big part. I know they've got Eisenhuth sitting there, who's a, uh, a reliable front row. He's not James Fisher-Harris, but so that'll play a big part in their season. But... As long as they get to the finals, and I think they're good enough, they'll get to the finals without a doubt. And you just you saw what they did last night against uh, the other night against Parramatta. Then everyone will be looking over their shoulder at them because they're so good in big games. Where do you see them getting to this season? Uh, depends on James Fisher Harris. If he's gone for an extended period, the the player they've they've really missed this year is uh, Spencer Lenu off the bench. They've got some young guys coming off the bench. Um, they just miss that punch off the bench. When Moses Leota and Fisher Harris go off, they just lack that real drive in the middle. So if he's out for an extended period, it's going to be a big challenge. What about Jerome Luai? He escaped punishment mm. for both the instances that he was put on report for, but for the tripping in particular, yeah, were you... No problem. I think it was a reflex. I don't think there's even, even any contact, was there? I know he slipped over Mitchell, but does there contact? Oh, yeah, there's a little bit. A little bit. Um... Yeah, I'm fine with the fine. Gus, fine with the fine? Yeah, I'm fine with the fine. Fine with the fine. What about for Parramatta, Gus? How did you, how did you see them in this, in this clash? I thought they were courageous without being great. I thought they were hanging on for most of the game. They obviously lost their centre early, which made a, a change to the lineup. I thought they were really gutsy because Panthers, for me, were dominating most of the aspects of play all night. And Penrith were pretty slick. Some of their ball movement was terrific. Um, but Parramatta just found a way to keep hanging in. Also, Parramatta found a little bit of a key to the Panthers' defence. They exposed them a couple of times on the edge. We heard Mitchell Moses talk before the game. He said, we're not going to try to go around them. We need to punch through them. And they did it. They came up with a couple of really good tries close to the line. Um, and that'll be looked upon by other coaches as well. You talk about the Panthers. Um, when they get into those big games, it's their ability to play a high-speed grind. A high-speed kick and chase and receive, kick and chase and receive and keep the ball in play and, and just wear opposition teams down. And that's a different sort of football to a lot of the games they're going to play this year where they're just trying to accumulate points and pick up their two points every week. So I still see them as the team to beat in the competition. However, um, the talent is diluting. Every year they lose another key player and they've got to be replaced. And, um, but the other sides have still got to get there. When, when they get to the big games, their high-speed grinding football will beat no sides. Mm. Well, it's funny in their high-speed grinding, they're doing a lot of turning under. Which yeah, it doesn't look that. like they're doing much, but I think when you think about the long game, is they're just tiring forwards out. You know, it's not a hard tackle, and maybe they can advance on that when they drop someone under. There's more support there at the moment. There's not that much support, but what they're doing though is just tiring out forwards. And when Parramatta, Parramatta had two shots at the end of the game, where Penrith had errors and they had chances to come down and and win the game. 
and just the fatigue level mm. was the difference because they had the same opportunities and come up with tries and they made the pass. And then at the back end of the game, they just fatigued. I think a ball hit the ground and something else happened, I forget. But that was, you know, just they just wear you down. And it's, over the season, they wear you down. Yeah. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast. Get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And, of course, my favourite, Freddie and the Ain. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.